Welcome back to the Brahmin Word, and we are uh, getting to the point of the flood. Now, there is a time jump from the end of Genesis chapter 6 with Noah uh, to the beginning of chapter 7. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but turn with me to Genesis chapter 7. We're going to be looking at uh, verses 1 through 10. And then next week on Tuesday, we will see the actual flood or the rest of chapter 7. So, with that said, uh, let's get into it uh, with verse 1. Then the Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. So, again, with the end of chapter 6, we see that uh, the Lord has given this project of building this thing called the ark, whatever that might be, uh, giving the announcement to Noah that whatever a flood is, is coming, uh, and Noah, uh, instead of hesitating or just not, uh, or just ignoring the Lord, it says at the end of six, uh, at the end of chapter six, Noah did this. He did all that God commanded him in chapter six, verse 22. Then there is this time jump to chapter seven, verse one, where there is this amount announcement to get into the ark, but also uh, to bring in all these animals with him in verses two through four. And, uh, and again, Noah does this. So uh, getting back to verse two, take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and his mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and his mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the heavens also, male and female, to keep their offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days I will send rain on the earth, forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. So you have, uh, it's very, very soon. You've got about a week to, to get all of these animals on, to get your family on, uh, because at the end of that week, the flood will happen. So Noah doesn't have a ton of time. And one thing that I've always wondered with Noah's Ark and the flood is how did he get all of these animals on there? Because when we think of all the different types of animals that we see today, uh, all the different species, it's mind-boggling how you can get all of those on there, uh, and especially two of each of those on there. But for me, I think it all bears down to uh, what is being talked about here. So in verse 2, it's saying, take with you seven pairs of all clean animals. Um, it could be attempt, uh, interpreted seven of each kind of clean animal. So the Hebrew there uh, is men, M-I-N. Uh, and Basically, it, it means kind. Now, what does kind mean here? I think it means a broad classification of two things that can breed together within their own um, within their own type. So, it, it basically, species and kind could be referenced together. However, species is a more modern term, and so to equate the modern term of species with the ancient Hebrew of men, or what we interpret as kind, it, again, it could be the case, but probably not likely. Uh, so, for instance, you would have a just a dog of some sort, whether it is a wolf or a domestic dog. Uh, same thing with your kind of cats, whether it's a domestic cat or a lion or, or something like that. You would have this broad uh, kind that would be uh, taken on to the ark. Um, the other thing, too, I want to bring up with the clean and unclean. Again, this is written in uh, we believe by Moses. And so taking this into that context and knowing that the Pentateuch uh, would be written by early, um, early Hebrews a lot, specifically after they come into the promised land, they understand the the difference between clean and unclean animals. Unclean animals um, with those being uh having hooves or eating their own, 
I think it's their own cut is what is what is often talked about with clean and unclean. Your pigs, uh, something like that, would be unclean. And we see that all the way through Acts chapter set, Acts chapter ten, where Peter has uh, the vision that finally says, "Look, you don't have to go uh, with these laws anymore because Jesus has fulfilled the Old Testament." So. But that's kind of a little bit why we see that language clean and unclean animals here in Genesis chapter 7, uh, way before the law is even implemented uh, in, uh, at the end of the book of Exodus. So, uh, seven days have come, though, the Lord, uh, and Noah does, uh, Noah does it. So for the next seven days, he gets all these animals, all of his family on the ark, and, uh, and now it's time. Verse 6. Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters came upon the earth. And Noah and his sons and his wife and his sons' his wives with him went into the ark to escape the waters of the flood. Of clean animals and of animals that are not clean and of birds and of everything that creeps on the ground, two and two, male and female, went into the ark with Noah as God had commanded Noah. And after seven days, the waters of the flood came upon the earth. So you have... Um, Noah's age mentioned here, which gives us a little bit of a timetable for the construction of the ark, or this uh, jump in time from the end of chapter 6 to the beginning of chapter 7. Because recall to the end of chapter 5 in Genesis, where uh, we are given the age of Noah uh, at the end of that chapter. So chapter 5 in verse 32, after Noah was 500 years old, Noah fathered Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So it gives you a rough time frame of when, um, of when Noah fathered his children. And then there is a little bit of time that goes forward with the uh, to the announcement of the flood to Noah uh, in uh, in Genesis six nine through twenty two. So I would say that the building of the ark would probably have lasted um, around. Uh, around a hundred years or so. It's hard to tell exactly how long it lasts, but you have this timestamp at the end of Genesis 5 uh, that gives us Noah's age of 500 years old. Then you have the timestamp that we just read in Genesis chapter 7 verse 6, which gives uh, Noah's age as 600 years old uh, when the flood of waters come upon the, came upon the earth. So it's it's a... It is a massive uh, construction business. But even then, it is remarkable how they were able to get this ark built uh, within a century. Uh, let's just take from those two timestamps, it was a century to build the ark. Now, was it probably a little less than that because the boys had to grow up in order to help Noah? Possibly. Uh, so could it be more around 80 years very, very possible. But anywhere from 80 to 100 years is the construction of the ark, which again is remarkable. <laughs> it is remarkable that it took only that long for how big of an ark this was, uh, as we talked about uh, before, how big the ark was. Um, and two, they don't have the machinations that you and I have today uh, for construction. It, still, it would be quite a construction project for anybody to do, even with machinery, but without machinery. I mean, it's remarkable that they were able to get this done in that time frame. Um, so with that being said, then you have, uh, you have the time for, uh, to build, to go into the art. And, uh, and so they do. And I think too, it's a beautiful picture to see the family of Noah go in, the two and two of each kind of animal go in, because it is a reminder to you and I about the grace of God, even in the midst of this ginormous flood that is that is coming. <laughs> uh, and it arrives at the end of uh, chapter 7, verse 10. So, 
with that being said, uh, thank you for spending a little bit of time here with me today as we look at uh, the the time going up to the ark uh, and just the grace that the Lord gives by trying to preserve life, even though that saint creation has been basically spitting in the eyes of God with the corruption and the sin that is on the earth. And yet the Lord wants to preserve it and keep it going uh, because of just of his character. Uh, so with that being said, uh, we will get to the actual flood next week. So I will see you then. But thanks for spending a little bit of time here with me today with the Brahmin Word. Thanks.